You know, we have 3,000 of these mugger crocodiles here and nowhere to let them go. People moved into crocodile habitat here in India a long time ago. There's just nothing left. The mugger once roamed the lowlands in large numbers from Iran to Burma. Today, only a few thousand are scattered in the wild throughout the Indian subcontinent. Now the last hope for the mugger may lie to the south of India, in Sri Lanka. Ram is headed back to Sri Lanka's Yala National Park after almost 30 years to see if the thriving mugger community he remembers is still there. Really, the only chance the mugger has in the wild is here in Sri Lanka. If they die out here, they're probably gone for good. To the casual observer, this may not look much like croc country, but hidden in the dry forest are many lakes and ponds created by an ancient people to irrigate their crops. The people are long gone, but the pools remain. That's how the world's largest population of wild muggers has been able to survive. Look at those colors. For years, I've wanted to come back to Yala to see how the mugger is doing. It's not a well-studied species, so the only way is to see for myself. Finding healthy young ones is a very good omen. But it's only a start. I won't really know how things are until I see how the full-grown mugger are doing. February a million years ago for all the modern world is visible here. This is a time of plenty. There's enough to eat and drink and the waters are high. The key to everything here is the water. Plants, trees, animals, they all depend on it and life changes dramatically when it dries up. For now, though, the living is easy. Ganga River is where Ram expects to catch his first glimpse of a mugger. It is an area teeming with longers, spotted deer. You might even spot an elephant or two. But the mugger is playing hard to get. In fact, the crocodile's ability to remain invisible is one of the reasons it has survived so long. Over the centuries, the mugger's fearsome reputation has given rise to dark legends of its taste for human flesh. When the ancient Indians gave this crocodile a name, it was the word for sea monster. The mugger may not make a habit of dining on humans, but any creature coming close to the water to drink better stay on guard. A certain edginess is understandable when 13 feet of armored reptile could be lurking hidden just beneath the surface of the water. Propelled by its powerful tail, the mugger can reach startling speeds underwater. But its most deadly skill may be patience. 
The mugger is not Yala's only reptilian hunter. This Indian rock python senses food, a bandicoot rat. The python can fit into spaces the mugger can't. This bandicoot's burrow is good protection for most of his natural enemies, but not all. Though he can't see him yet, the bandicoot senses death slithering toward him. Like many bandicoot holes, this one has an escape hatch. But heading toward the water may be a mistake. Terrified and temporarily blinded by the glare, the bandicoot finally goes exactly where it shouldn't. A crocodile's jaws can slam shut with an impact of more than a thousand pounds per square inch. Nature designed their teeth, all 66 of them, for crushing and tearing. They could easily swallow a small animal like this in one gulp, but muggers often seem to chew prey for the sheer taste of them. Contrary to popular legend, muggers are for the most part pretty laid-back sociable animals. In fact, they spend much of their time just basking in the sun. But when mating season approaches, they're also intensely territorial, and any spot with deep water is worth fighting for. The battles are part of a fierce struggle for dominance, and muggers who make it to the top of the local hierarchy earn more than bragging rights. To the winner go the most precious spoils of war, his pick of the females. The stakes are high, the combat brutal, sometimes fatal. The jaw slap, roughly translated, means don't mess with me. Prime real estate will often draw together dozens of combatants, each one determined to be king of the hill. stage of the dominance fight, this big male flaunts his position by raising head and tail out of the water. Bubbling and spraying make the same point. Take me if you can. One hardy young male issues a challenge. The big male boldly responds, and the younger croc decides to retreat. It's amazing to watch this ritual unfold. These crocs could kill each other, and sometimes do. But in this test of strength, the losers usually live to fight another day. Finally, the last rival is chased clean out of the pond. The battle is over. The big male has the pond to himself now. And the stage is set for what's really important, courtship. The victor has won the right to mate with the local female of his choice. But winning her presents a very different challenge. The male is all set to mate, but nothing is going to happen until she's good and ready. Because in this dance, the female leads. It is said in the natural world, the only real constant is change. But this ancient ritual was choreographed more than 100 million years ago. And every year in the waters of Yala, 
these armored giants reenacted. Exactly as they did when they shared the world with Tyrannosaurus Rex. Once the male is accepted, the mating begins in the shallows. Their tails help them keep their balance in what can be a very slippery operation. Muggers mate in Yala springtime so their eggs will hatch during the October monsoon, a time of plenty. No. Mating is finished for the year. Like everything else in Yala, it's orchestrated by the coming and going of the water. By July, Yala's waters are starting to evaporate under a scorching sun. The lakes and ponds all these animals depend on are getting shallower each day. But the disappearing waters that are killing off the fish serve up a rare bounty for muggers and birds. It is the magic moment in the first weeks of the dry season when there suddenly seems to be more to eat than even these hungry predators can handle. Animals that would normally keep a respectful distance dine side by side with an erstwhile enemy who's now got other fish to fry. There, isn't there something? There's about 140 crocodiles all together. I've never seen anything like it. They're all feeding together. One goes under, pushes fish up. They grab fish from each other. They grab fish in midair. up together catching fish it seems to be to their advantage because they herd the fish together much the way otters or orcas or, or dolphins do but it's just something I've never seen in my life and I've been watching crocs a long time the feast will help the crocs weather the worst part of the dry season a mugger can put away about 15 percent of its body weight at a sitting as much as 150 pounds the female needs high doses of nutrients as her eggs develop inside her. Now she's got to find the right place to stake out her nesting ground. And the right place is near water. Muggers lay their eggs under cover of darkness. hind legs are made for digging. Once the nest has been hollowed out, she is ready to lay her eggs. They emerge covered in a thick layer of mucus which acts as a shock absorber when they drop into the nest. Like many egg-laying reptiles, the female remains in a deep trance. Mother crocs can't always stay with their nests. If their pond dries up and if they don't have a tunnel nearby, 
They will have to search for a place to weather the dry season, which makes it critical that these eggs be safely buried. After covering the eggs for their two-month incubation, the female packs down the nest, partly to camouflage her eggs from the spying eyes of Yala's many predators. She's done her best to bring another generation into the world. Now it's time to see if she can save herself. This is all going to dry up two or three weeks. Should be nothing but parched mud, dry sand. Everything's going to have a hard time, including the crocs. Despite the toll the sweltering heat can take on muggers, it also has its side benefits. Muggers seem to use the sun to drive annoying parasites like these leeches out of their mouths. Open mouth basking also helps crocs regulate their body temperature. The waters of Yala, once so plentiful, are now nearly gone. As the heat builds, heavily furred animals like the sloth bear are in for a tough time. Most of the crocs have long since left this evaporating pond. One last mugger remains, though. And one is enough. This guy, too, will soon abandon the pond, because his only options now are to retreat to a tunnel or find a body of water that won't dry up. Mugger's dry season residence of choice is an underground refuge, a deep, cool tunnel they dig out, preferably near a water source. This croc has returned to a perfect site, one that he started working on a couple of years ago. He needs to get the tunnel into shape for another season. He'll use his strong claws to burrow deeper and deeper. This female is still looking for a spot of her own. She's less experienced and hasn't yet dug a tunnel. She knows she has to find a place to take cover from the dry season. But she's made a bad choice. It's her mate's tunnel. He's twice her size, and he doesn't want a roommate. The height of the dry season, no tunnel. The odds are definitely against her. With a tunnel to himself, the big male is all right for now. But there are many harsh weeks ahead. His mate has no choice now. She's got to set off on an overland migration that could take her as far as 10 miles from home. It's a brutal ordeal for an animal that spends most of its life in the water. She's not alone. Muggers all across Yala will inch their way through the park, searching for the remaining pools that haven't dried up. It is the annual migration, a punishing obstacle course that some will not survive. In Yala, the dry season is the mother of invention. While some migrate, others dig in. The balloon frog builds itself an underground chalet. The moisture it retains in its skin will help it get through the next few months. The ruddy mongoose can survive the dry season on water and the tiny morsels of food it finds in the bare bones of an arid landscape. It's unbearably hot out here. Muggers have to find a way to beat this heat or risk death by dehydration. 
The key to survival is how well they handle this period. Sadly, I've already seen a few who didn't make it. Whoa. Another casualty of the dry season. This crocodile was either trying to find water or maybe his tunnel, because that's how they survive. Rom knows that every year some of Yala's muggers succumb to the ruthless heat. The question is, now that the river and most of the lakes are drying up, are enough crocs making it to safety? A pond like this usually will have water in it, even in the dry season. This one's completely dry. And it looks like one of the victims down there. Sometimes even in the real dry seasons, all the ponds dry up. This guy came up to these rocky hills expecting to find water, but he didn't. When the river flowed, Yala was a generous provider. Now, it is a relentless stalker. The exhausted female has found a temporary reprieve, some shady respite from the heat. But after nearly 10 miles on the road, she is completely worn out. something, the unmistakable fragrance of rotting meat. It seems she barely has the strength to put one foot in front of the other, but the call of hunger is potent. dozens of desperately hungry wanderers. The lucky find means they will live at least a while longer. When food is scarce, muggers can come to blows over every scrap. But when it's all you can eat, Everyone's the best of friends. Tomorrow morning, there will be almost nothing left. By now, most of the muggers that have tunnels should be hunkering down, cool, calm, and collected. To find out if the age-old system is working as it should, Rom will have to crawl into the croc tunnels. He hopes the cold-blooded reptiles will be too sluggish to attack him. Ah, a very typical croc tunnel. It's about 16 feet deep. This tunnel might have taken the croc a couple of years to dig. It's not something he's gonna do all at once in this season. You see, there's not much sand or mud out here. So, but he'll return to it year after year when the dry season comes. A croc was here at one time, but not now. This one too is empty. Look at the size of this one. Man, this hole's big enough for me to get into. I think. Yeah, it's a tight fit. Yeah. 
It looks like it's getting smaller. Wow, there's a bend. There's a bend in the tunnel. Can't get any closer. Yeah, it looks like there's a crock eye shiny. Yep, I can see its teeth. Wow, they're gleaming. <laughs> nice. This male is doing great. He has finally made it to his tunnel, where he'll be able to weather the next few months in relative comfort. Lisa, gotta say it's nice and cool in there. And a nice big crocodile, too. Grieving at me. But as the male digs in for the duration, his mate is still on the road. It is day five of her migration. Though she's growing weaker by the day, she's big enough to keep trudging onward. But for smaller crocs, the terrain is often too tough. Miles from water, this young mugger has little chance of surviving. But tonight, the female is once again lucky. Vacant tunnels are not always easy to find in Yala, but she has found one. To survive, this young mugger has had to leave her eggs far behind. They will have to make do without her. If she's lucky, in years to come, she'll join the ranks of older females who don't have to migrate because they have tunnels of their own and lay their eggs nearby. Hey, there's some fresh croc tracks right here. Look at that tail mark. I just follow it up, see if it goes somewhere. Whoa, look at this. There's a huge, very well-used croc tunnel here. Chances are she might, if it's a female, she might have made a nest right in front of the tunnel in the sand. Examining croc nests is risky business. Some females will charge anything, or anyone, that gets too close. Hello, anybody home? Just like to have a peek inside. See if mama's at home, or even if I can see very far inside. Wow. This is how a crocodile can survive the dry season here. It's hot as hell out there. In here, it's nice and cool. It's not very wet. In fact, there's no dampness at all. It's just dry and dusty. But its main thing is, she can thermoregulate in here, keep nice and cool till the rains arrive. That'll be a month or two away at least. Wow. Oh, yeah. She's right there. Oh, man. She's hardly four or five feet in front of my light. And I could probably reach out and touch her. Except she'd probably take my hand off. Here's the first eggs on top. And you can tell that they're fertile by seeing the bands on them. See that big white band? That's the sign of a fertile egg. Eventually, this band will spread to both ends of the egg. And that's just about hatching time. I'd say it's got about another month to go. These crocs are dry season nesters. It seems a bit strange. This is a very harsh, horrible time, actually. But when you think of it, they're going to hatch just about the times when the first rains arrive. And that's just the time when a baby croc could find all its food, little frogs and insects and so on. I just put this back very carefully without turning the egg, as you notice. Keep it oriented up like that. You could actually kill the embryo if you turn the egg over. Let's just get an idea of how many eggs there might be here. Actually, a mugger nest usually has about 20 or 30 eggs, but we've known some really exceptionally big females to lay 40 eggs.
The nests are doing well, but above ground it's a struggle just to survive for all the animals. When things are at their worst, some of Yala's creatures start looking for food outside the park, where it's easy to find. Among people, this can lead to disaster. Locals near Yala have named this tuskless elephant Raja. Raja has taken to making regular forays into their garbage pit. Raja got used to living off the townspeople here. But there's a thin line you cross when suddenly you're an annoyance, or even a menace. Raja looks like a big, friendly animal, but the people know that with one lumbering step, he can bring the whole house down. Driven from the settlement, Raja has to leave behind the tasty human refuse. He's back to the same old wilted leaves by the side of a well-traveled road. Oh, it's like the old signboards say elephants have right away. You, know, you gotta sort of uh, respect that. Actually, most of them will just get off the road, but this guy is cantankerous for some reason. No, no one knows why. If you don't have anything Raja wants, things stay calm. But what Raja does want, Raja takes. And he can toss around a two-ton van like a beach ball. Many people think elephants are gentle creatures. But to people in this part of the world, they're half god, half devil. Go inside. Go inside. Wild creatures are not just vulnerable to human hostility. Our mere presence in their habitat can totally upset the natural balance. When humans and animals clash, the animal nearly always loses. This is the middle of the hot season, and the only way the crocs are going to survive is by digging tunnels. But some of them didn't survive, and I smell something very strong, and it looks like a dead croc over there. As long as they stay inside Yala National Park, oh, muggers are generally safe from human hostility. But beyond its borders, things can get ugly. Oh, man. Right into the brain. He must have got trapped outside the tunnel. Someone came along and saw it and killed it. That's not common around here. People usually don't kill crocodiles. There's so much tolerance, and that's why there's so many crocs left. It is a sad example of what can happen. The combination of the dryness, the heat, drove the croc out and made him totally vulnerable. People are scared of crocs after all. Usually, muggers will keep their distance from human communities, but it doesn't always work out that way. Throughout the region, muggers have settled down in their tunnels, sometimes in the least likely of locales like the outskirts of a medium-sized town outside Yala. As the human population has grown here, they've needed to build infrastructure, like this irrigation ditch. And they dug it right outside this croc's front door. Ram has been called to the scene to see if he can resolve the problem. His plan is to relocate her to permanent water. First, he has to get her out of the tunnel. Pull. 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 Okay, pull. Pull. Little more. Okay, enough. Hold it. Don't, don't, don't leave loose, huh? 
Pull it out. Pull it out. Pull it out. Pull. Huh? Just keep your hands on it always because you never know it starts moving. <laughs> Now, one second, I'll just get on this side. Excuse me. Now, we don't lift the legs, we lift only the body. Ready? Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> It may have taken the female weeks to reach the tunnel. How was she to know she was just 40 minutes from permanent water in Yala? Okay, let's lift it up. Okay, good. Okay, head first. Perhaps a little shy around humans, this young female needs some encouragement to crawl to the water. Now, I think she wants to get back to the water whenever she can. Finally, once Ram and his team have left, instinct takes over. The dry season is finally in retreat. The water once again beckons to the mugger. It begins with a sudden wave of shadows and the first fluttering breezes. Drops become splashes. Splashes grow into trickles. The water is returning. The long months of parched misery seem like a bad dream now. The streams overflow once more. Two returns to its familiar haunts. It is the time for a new generation of muggers to enter the land of the living. Some newborns are in a hurry to taste freedom from shell and nest. Though leaving home can be a sticky business. The father has spent his days and nights close by. The bleating calls of hatchlings tell him it's time to start digging them out. Unlike some fathers in the animal kingdom, the mugger can be a responsible parent. The annual struggle to survive the dry season means that sometimes the mother croc won't be around when her eggs hatch. That's the case here. So amazing as it may seem, this male will take charge of the hatchling's first crucial days. After unburying his babies, the male's first priority is to get them to the water. Leave them here and they're easy pickings for any number of predators. Many hatchlings can climb out of the nest by themselves once dad has scraped the heavy sand away. Without that help, they could be buried alive. No sooner do they leave the nest than they are under assault. If the ants don't get them, something else might. The male checks to make sure he's gotten all of them to the relative security of the pond. Dad applies gentle pressure to see if a baby will hatch. If it's infertile, it's food. Here, nothing goes to waste. As the last of the hatchlings emerge from the sand, Dad finishes off breakfast. Newborns 
seem to know instinctively that for now, there's safety in numbers. Calling to one another helps them stay together. For the first several weeks, they're never far from the vigilant eye of their father, who watches as they try out new steps. And discourages those who might want to make a meal of his offspring. Neighbors lend a helping hand as the babies get used to their new world. Any umbilicus left after birth becomes fish food. For these hatchlings, the safest place in the pond is right here. And the big guy makes an excellent basking rock. But sometimes dad just needs to get away. Not long after they come into the world, the babies start hunting. At this stage of life, these rapidly growing babies have to eat constantly. Patient stocking is hardwired in mugger crocs. Still, it's one thing to catch a frog. Once you have it, what do you do with it? Maybe two heads are better than one. At this point, it's a matter of trial and error for the baby. They can rely on their parent for protection, but hunting and feeding they have to learn on their own. Unfortunately, too many cooks can spoil the broth. At last, the puzzle is solved. Hatchlings learn the law of the pond. As ye eat, so shall ye be eaten. Or at least sucked on a little bit. Leeches usually won't kill a hatchling, but they can be a serious annoyance. As with hunting, the digging instinct is alive in muggers from birth though here, too, they have to learn by doing. Newborns practice the same movements they'll use later when a tunnel represents their best chance for survival. For now, these future lords of the deep are safe. I have to admit I was worried about the mugger here in Sri Lanka. But it's clear to me now that the waters of Yala are still providing for them. An ancient presence in a modern world. The muggers of Yala have come through another year, doing what they have done since long before the first humans saw their first sunrise. The outlook for the wild mugger elsewhere in South Asia is bleak. But here in Yala, Mugger are thriving. It makes me feel real good. It gives me reason to hope. Nature has made life harsh for the Mugger. But when things are at their bleakest, it is a stubborn competitor. Its resilience is unequaled. Don't forget, Crocs are still big, scary predators, and they're still living cheek to jowl with humans. It's not an easy marriage. And if the mugger disappears from Yala, it probably won't be coming back anywhere.